For Latin American players, the LCS is the big stage. The lights are brighter, the fans are louder, and the stakes are higher than ever before. At the very least, playing on the North American stage is the next step on the road to international recognition. For players from the LLA and other minor regions, reaching the eyes of the international community really only happens at Worlds or MSI. The window is short and the margin for error is minimal. But for players from South America, even getting to North America has been a challenge. And before 2021, no one had ever gotten to or succeeded at that level. That is, until Jose Deodo had an all-time individual performance by a minor region player at Worlds 2020. But who is Jose Deodo? Argentinian-born Brandon Joel Villega started his League of Legends career in 2017 with PL Gaming before making it to the LLA in 2019 at just 18 years old as one of the most highly touted prospects in the region. In 2020, his Rainbow Seven squad finished third in the opening split and finally pushed through with a closing split championship and a world's berth. Jose Deodo won Player of the Series award during every best of five that Rainbow Seven played during the 2020 closing split playoffs. Down 0-2 in the finals, Jose Deodo spearheaded a reverse sweep to stun All Knights and capture an LLA title. More importantly, they also punched their ticket to Worlds. For players from minor regions, winning your domestic league and getting to Worlds at all often isn't enough. Once there, it takes a big upset or a moment of individual brilliance to get recognized by a major region team, let alone an opportunity to play with them. At Worlds, Jose Deodo put up an eye-catching performance at play-ins where he led his team to wins over Unicorns of Love and China's LGD Gaming. Throughout the tournament, Jose Deodo posted a KDA of 2.6, a CS per minute of 6.0, a damage per minute of 338, a kill participation of 68.6%, and came just one series away from qualifying for the group stage. Yeah, wh what I think in Worlds, it was, uh, the biggest experience was uh, there us got much with the biggest jungle. I play with Sofum, I play with Karsa, some solo kills, I play Screams against some other teams. So I think like I get these good things about these junglers. Like they always like play really good and they all do the good stuff. Like they never make mistakes like I don't know that junglers tend to do against me last years. So I feel like being there and playing with the best kinda get you the experience to play against uh, players that don't make mistakes. Alone, looking for that shockwave, looking to try and dive in. Kramer steps forward, uh -oh. looking to spray and pray. Oh! the backline, but the shockwave is incredible! And there goes Twitch! Here we go, Predator is ready to go. Oh. Jose Diodo's also here in the fight. He's gonna blow up Gadget if he's not careful. Nice execution from the last caress. Right. Oh, Gadget. Oh, <laughs> not a chance in the world. Jose Diodo on this Evelyn. Find the kill. Instead, he's in some trouble on his own. Here comes Cassiopeia. No man's flashing over the wall. Jose Diodo on a killing spree. Trying to get himself away. He is going to be killed in return. The team fight going to happen. Yes, it is. Ase into the back line. Looking for no man's. Boss spinning around. Able to find a kill into Ase. Boss wants to get himself away. Able to find the second knockup now into Jose Diodo, who gets a kill into Santos. So sitting in that bush, good idea. The problem is, it's season 10, oh. and there's fire blooms everywhere. Oh, no. Nautilus, you just had a gameplay experience, brother. Jose Diodo is so strong on this. Evelyn, if he finds anybody, he'll just blow him up. I found another enemy. Oh, no, Mr. Scorpion. You are about to get got, my friend. He goes after the pole, but there's your last caress. See you on the other side, man. There is no way out of that. That is an Evelyn with a death cap. But Jose Diodo's performance at Worlds goes so far beyond the stat sheet. With a countless amount of eyeballs glued to the screen watching the next generation of talent take the international stage by storm, Jose Deodo was sure to gain recognition somewhere. And sure enough, his standout performance at Worlds 2020 allowed Jose Deodo to finally graduate into the big leagues. Last offseason, the 20-year-old jungler became the first LLA player ever to be imported to a major region when FlyQuest signed him to a three-year deal. He's got a very sound mind. He's, a, he's an incredible student of the game, to be honest. Um, which is so different, I think, you know, for, for players that are in less recognized regions, for me to kind of just sit down with him and listen to how he got from, you know, a fresh solo queue talent to really understanding the professional game, how many VODs he had to consume to get there, how much custom game jungle pathing, you know, practice that he did, like just all the different steps he took to try to make himself the best that he could be at that particular time, uh, that spoke volumes to me. I'm someone who, you know, from 
top to bottom, all our hires, you know, everybody at FlyQuest, we earn our keep. It's it's just an underdog mentality that we've had since the inception of the organization. And when you find players that are obviously talented and obviously show that competency, that have that work ethic, that have the humility that he did, it just, it just felt like a no-brainer. Those who watched him develop in the LLA now get to watch him thrive in the LCS. And while it's one thing for Jose de Oro's fans to be able to identify their favorite player's nameplate on a stream in a language that they might not be able to understand, having his story told by broadcasters that speak in their language is another thing entirely. Where Jose de Oro went, the fans followed. So ahead of the 2021 season, FlyQuest established a Spanish-speaking co-stream of not just their games, but of the entire LCS broadcast bringing the game to the doorstep of fans who wanted to watch Jose de Oto's career progress against some of the best players in the world. Three days after FlyQuest signed Jose de Oto, the LLA got another boost in recognition when Golden Guardians signed All Night Support Newbie, signaling a widening of the net when it came to minor region scouting. Over the course of the last few years, the LCS has shifted into a league where players can grow at their own rate. Even beyond imported players, the LCS's own pieces of domestic talent are evolving into superstars. The hope is that those better developed players would be strong enough to stack up against the rest of the world. And while it's easy to point to Jose de Oro as part of the future of the LCS, he's still a core member of a FlyQuest team that's developing at an intense rate. With an entirely brand new roster coming together just one year after qualifying for Worlds, FlyQuest is looking towards players like Jose de Oto, Licorice, and others to help shape its future. For us, it's just really about improving every day, and I think we have a strong group of players, and by the end of the year, we could really be like a top team and a real contender. As far as 2021 goes, FlyQuest players know that their sights are set on the long term. All the way from the front office to the starting lineup, the team is well aware that the developmental process is going to take time, but their patience will be greatly rewarded. I think it's it's fair and accurate to qualify our team uh, as a development project. I think that, uh, you know, all of our players and all of our staff would love to be, you know, more competitive than our record shows at the moment, but we have seen a lot of positives from uh, the first day of scrims that we took place on, uh, I think it was like mid-January, it was our first day of scrims, and a month later, I think we've made a lot of progress that uh, speaks well for the growth that we want to see by the time we get towards uh, the end of the season. Jose de Oto's performance in the LCS could have an impact that reaches much further beyond his own career. Given that Latin American teams and players have to do a lot more to reach the same heights as far as results and exposure as those of major regions, Jose de Oto could be considered a pioneer for his region. He represents much more than himself. The Latin American prodigy has an entire region on his shoulders coming into the 2021 season. I do believe like this team only needs to, I don't know, get a good week or whatever just to reach up. Because at this point I think like we can get the good teams, some games, but uh, it's not like we are going to get all games. So we're going to get to improving like certain things that are little stuff like from today's, I don't know, just random deaths or just ganks or stuff like they are little stuff that doesn't leave us to full improve, but I think like they are mistakes that you can improve really easy and uh, it will probably see it from week to week as play. Not only is Jose de Oto a rising star among the next generation of young LCS players, but the next generation of imports as well. He's the North Star for other rising LLA and minor region talent to follow, and if he plays well, teams could see the value in expanding their scouting efforts in the future. He is the litmus test, and if he passes, his performance could blaze a trail for more players that might not have even been given a chance otherwise.